I'm in the absolutely gorgeous Hikone. We're here at the end of our 15 day trip and I wanted to talk about gear. Specifically the gear I need to take on a trip like this where I'm with family, I don't have a lot of space because we're traveling really light. I've got pretty much all of it packed into this bag. So let's find somewhere to sit and I'll run you through what I've got. Ah, looks like I found a good spot right here. Although it is a fairly high traffic area. Uh, we've got a shrine just around the corner and there's a lot of the older folk coming back and forth paying their respects. So I'll do my best while I'm here. So traveling Japan with a small bag such as this, it's quite tricky. Um, but I think I managed. My initial idea was to bring uh, two small prime lenses and my 24 to 70 millimeter because that lens is my most versatile and the most used. However, I dropped my camera on the concourse of the airport before we even got on the plane. This being Japan, the home of Pentax, I couldn't go without buying some extra gear here. And I'll get onto that in a minute. So, with that said, here's what I've got in my bag. First up, cloth. Everyone needs a cloth. Got the camera. Now, this is my Pentax K1 Mark II. It is heavy, but the quality in this camera is second to none still. The camera at the moment is equipped with a 35mm 1.4 Sigma, uh, the art lens. This is a fantastic lens, especially for low light. The, um, the image quality is beautiful and the colours are very rich. That is also really heavy. Now, the 2470 that I wanted obviously got sent back to Melbourne, so I don't have that with me. But I had recently purchased a 100mm macro lens. This is a beautiful lens and I brought it because I didn't quite have the range. I really wanted to bring a 70 to 200, but that was just way too big and heavy. So I brought the 100mm macro, but along with that, I've got a two times teleconverter. So I still get that 200 millimeters if I really need it. That said, I haven't used it yet. There might be an occasion in my last day or so, but I kind of figure that's dead weight, although it's very, very light. So that's the extent of what I brought to Japan. Uh, of course, in the bag, I've got spare batteries. I've got about four of these spare. And aside from that, a passport and a notebook. A trip overseas requires you to bring filters. This filter kit is a little bit too big to fit in this bag. So it does go in my other luggage and it only comes out on special occasions. But inside, I have the mounting kit for the Nissi V6 system. That's got a polarizer inside it. Now this fits onto my 24-70mm lens, which is a bit of a problem. Can't use it. However, I did have the foresight to bring a step-up ring for the 35mm. Thank goodness. This filter kit includes two ND filters, a six stop and a 10 stop, plus a couple of graduateds, which I never use, but they fit in here and I, I don't ever want to take them out. Plus, it's a 1 8 black mist filter. Really lovely for nighttime photography in the city. And for those extra moody shots, a 1 quarter black mist filter. And this filter I bought on a whim a few years ago and I have yet to use it, but it's a Nissi natural light filter. But the other thing I needed to talk about was the video gear. So when I'm making videos, I do need a video camera and I need an audio system. So the video camera, I've got my Osmo Pocket One. So this is the original uh, DJI Osmo. Still serving me really well. I get a good couple of hours of video out of it. And I've got an extra charger, which is not in my bag. Um, so that's what you're watching on now, but that is the size of it. And to go with that, I've got the Rode mic kit. Uh, the Rode Wireless Go 
two. So there's one of them. And the other one's sitting in my pocket, attached to my Lavalier mic here. And the receiver is on that camera, just over there. Any of my other chargers and accessories like cables and things, they're all in my other bag, my bigger backpack. With Japan being the home of Pentax, I couldn't visit Tokyo without visiting the Pentax Club, which is, I don't even know exactly where it is, somewhere near where I, I was staying. I will probably put my visit there uh, in another video, over my full Japan video. However, I've got to say, going in there and being able to test out lenses uh, at the source with their full knowledge, even with their limited English and my practically non-existent Japanese, um, made things so much easier. While I was there, I tested out this really lovely lens, which obviously I bought. Um, so this is an HD DA 70mm 2.4. Um, a limited edition. It's got this really nice soft baker effect. I thought 2.4 might not be shallow enough. I was really after a 77 millimeter 1.2, I think it is, the limited. But ultimately, cost ruled that out, and they're quite similar in a way, anyway. And I have one last item that I've added to since coming to Japan. And this is a lens that I've been after for years. And I don't really know what's been holding me back, but it's a classic lens and they're fairly cheap anyway, but I don't know, like a couple of hundred dollars didn't seem right for such an old lens. And I guess maybe because I've picked up vintage lenses for less than that. Um, but anyway, this lens is the classic SMC 50mm f1.4. It's a manual lens, obviously, because it's so old. It's a really smooth focus. You can see it's just gliding through there. And the image quality on this is astounding. I was so surprised. And I'll show you a couple of photos I took with that as well. There's one in particular I'm in love with. I'd done a fair bit of research on camera shops around Tokyo, knowing that I was going to do this video, and of course, knowing I wanted to get a nice vintage lens. Um, there are a lot of secondhand shops in Tokyo, but I found this particular one called Classic Camera Maritz. Now, they don't have a website. I can put the address there and maybe link uh, to a couple of reviews. The gentleman running this shop was really lovely and the range of lenses was extensive but not overwhelming which I found in another camera shop. So what did I pay for this lens? Just 15,000 yen which roughly translates to 130-ish Australian dollars and maybe 100 US if you're into that sort of thing. So I now have four lenses instead of three minus one, plus two. Anyway, I've got four lenses on me now, one in the shop. This camera's going back to Japan as well, probably to get fixed, to fix that sensor. So that's my camera bag for my trip to Japan. Pretty lightweight, I can fit it all in this bag, except for the filters, obviously. Really simple and straightforward. Uh, I hope you got something out of this for travel. I guess my big takeaway for this is go the small prime lenses. They're much lighter, but if you do have one zoom lens that can do it all, that might just be better for you. So thanks for watching. I'll be back with another video about the trip to Japan in general. Until next time, I'm off to shoot some more pictures before the kids get up.